Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents The Current with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, The Current, with our guest, Katie Pengra, and we are also joined by Dustin Swaylock. Hi. Of Voltaic Video. Yes. Yes. You say Voltaic right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do people mess that oh, up? Oh, I get it. That's That one's even worse. Voltic. Voltic. Uh, <laughs> Voltac. I've heard that, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I just decided to pick a company name that was as unpronounceable as my last yeah. name. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what I... I, I like to kick off this this part of the the podcast with a question about how you would you describe your life today and then we'll you know it'll make sense fairly uh, fairly soon enough why Dustin has joined us in, in this part <laughs> so Katie I'll let you answer the question and Dustin you can jump in whenever I'm picking one word is that it no this one is okay I can yeah. do whatever I want okay good uh so yes today um uh, if you had listened to the previous mm-hmm. podcast you heard, uh, no, I just try, I've been trying to diversify and do some different things creatively. Um, and I became friends with Dustin, um, through stand up because he and his wife, Jen, were, um, awesome fans and they would just come to shows all the time. Um, and we would run into them and, you know, started talking to them, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, I don't even really remember the first time we started working together on stuff. It was you were working at uh at a a hookah hookah at hookah, can we say the name yes, of the yes, place? Yes. Yeah, it's just some, it, it was a, a place that sold hookahs. We'll say that online retailer. It was of an hookahs. old job I had. Yeah, and uh she she was the first person to hire me for something outside of just stand up. Uh, cause Dustin filmed stuff. Yes. I, I was, I was doing like, I was just taping comedy or stand up for folks and giving people tapes to submit to festivals and such. But she needed to do a how to video for this, uh, for the Suka pipe company. And so we shot, I think three. Um, that was, and that was the first time. And I actually, she, I remember she was asking me at the shoot. And I don't know if you remember this, but like, so you're, you're close to doing this stuff full time now, right? And I was like, no, <laughs> there's, there's not enough money, but, but it was, that was like the first time that I was given the idea, like, Hey, this, this is actually something that might be a living at some point. Uh-huh. And just the watching the way that she worked and organizing it and, and it, it very much matched and was comfortable for me. It's always a big thing for me is who I'm comfortable working with. Uh, and I, I don't know. It was, it felt like a good, comfortable match. And that was that. Uh, I feel th- there was a, I can't remember the next thing. I know we shot more of those, but I, I know we started collaborating on, on short films and stuff shortly after that. And once Pretty Awful came along, Amber and I had been talking about, uh, the germ of one of the episodes, like the idea of, of one of the episodes for a year or more. And as soon as we needed somebody that was a complete asshole, we're like, we need to bring Katie Penger in because, because she can do this. So that's, uh, that was asshole really- is my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Do you, Katie, do you want to tell us what pretty awful is? Yeah. So pretty awful is a web series that was originated by Amber Bixby. Um, and she had this idea. Uh, basically it's two characters, um, two female characters who are, um, obsessed with their looks and terrible people and also just like dumb as hell. <laughs> um, so that was, yeah, that was the idea. And her and Dustin had collaborated together on some other short films before that. Um, there was Opsiono Dose and Flower Baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they were starting to collaborate on this and I was asked to come in and act in it. Um, and then we all just kind of started working together to like punch it up, make it funnier, start filming it, and we took turns directing it. So yeah, our first season, season one, three episodes came out last February. It was a year actually. ago. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly a year ago. Um, yeah, and so yeah, Dustin did it all for us, put it all together, and it looks beautiful and wonderful. And um, yeah, so now we have a little web series out there, which was really fun. Is there a season two? 
There's going to be. Yeah. Uh, I think we're hoping to shoot it this summer. It's just time has gotten away. Yeah. I, if you had asked me the question, like, describe uh, the current state, I would uh-huh. have said uh, organized chaos. <laughs> because uh, Katie and I, and, and Amber too, we just all three have so many projects going on at the mm-hmm. same time. It's very hard. I don't think the three of us have been in the same room together except for a handful of times since we premiered it last year. Wow. And that's not because we hate each other. I mean, that's part of it. But <laughs> no, it's, it's mainly just because we're all three have all kinds of things going on. Mm-hmm. Katie and I have been focusing on the documentary, which we'll get to in a yeah. minute. Um, so much that it's, it's kind of, I don't know, for a while there, every time I come to a club at, at Cap or, or the Velve, I'm like, oh man, I forgot all these people are here because <laughs> I haven't been out in so long. Uh-huh. So yeah, yeah, it's just been a very, very busy last 12 months. Yeah. Um, most of my questions are a little dull and boring. I want to hear about <laughs> this current project that you're, you're working on. Sure. Sure. Uh, I mean, the current one that we're finishing is funniest, uh, which, which you have seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, uh, we're very close to locking it and, and finishing everything with it. Uh, it's a feature length documentary about the funniest person in Austin contest. Uh, we specifically followed the 30th, uh, because I'm obsessed with anniversaries (laughs) and, and such. Um, but we spent, I'm, I mean, we spent a good 12 months prior to shooting. Uh, figuring out who we wanted to follow. Okay. Uh, and we had statistical data for that. We had our own hunch and, and also just like who we thought would have the best story to follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's turned into the product that you watched the other night mm-hmm. in, in rough cut form. Uh, and that has been, that's been our life for, I mean, in earnest, we started working on it about 13 months ago. We shot our first interview with Montgomery Wayne 13 months ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, since then, it's just been interview, interview, interview. And then, of course, during the contest, uh, that's, you know, six weeks of shooting. Uh, for me personally, I'm there at least three nights a week or at least two nights a week. Most weeks, three nights a week, though, just taping the contest because that's that's something I do for the contest and for the club. And um, so it's it's a ton. We I don't know. It, it, people keep asking me how much footage we have. I don't know how many hours we have. I know it's like six and a half terabytes of, of data though. Jeez. Yeah. So wow. it's 80, I think we're at 85 individual scenes now. And that's some of those could be like hour long interviews. Like the, the interview with Matt Bearden is like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are like 10 minute interviews. Uh, some of them are, you know, whole nights of the contest, just depending on what pieces we put together. So, yeah. So if if anybody spends any time in the Austin comedy scene, they'll see you with a camera. They kind of know <laughs> what you do. You're not I don't remember that you're in any of the scenes, but this is your baby too, Katie. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I Justin and I both have very brief cameos in it. Yeah. Uh but it's just like in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um uh-huh. Yeah, no, I so yeah, that was like Justin and I had started talking about wanting to make this, you know, years ago, basically at this point. Um, we both had an interest in it and found it to be a really compelling mm-hmm. thing that exists out there. And, um, actually for my master's thesis, I did a mini documentary on FPIA. Okay. Um, but it, you know, it's just like, I also don't have a whole lot of technical skills as far as filming and editing. So I did the best I could. And, you know, I, th- I think that it just helped pique my interest in it a little bit more. And so Justin and I, um, yeah, we were like, you know what? I think we should really do this and make it a full length thing because I mm-hmm. do think it's interesting and I think other people will too, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. And like he has great technical skills, um, with editing and cameras and he's been helping me learn. Um, yeah. So I think that we're trying to make it interesting and compelling and mm-hmm. also look awesome. So yeah. we'll see. And she, uh, Katie did, I would say the, the lion's share of the camera work in there. Like most of the oh. time, uh, if it's uh, during the contest in general, it, the shots that are like off to the sides or being following somebody that's her or Terrence McDavid. Okay. But it's my, it was mostly Katie. She conducted all the interviews. I mean, so it's, it's certain. And then I, I've handled the bulk of the editing. Um, and, and any of the technical stuff, anytime that we could actually like lock down a camera for like interviews or something, I'm mm-hmm. doing the lighting and everything. So there's a big partnership. It's not, that's, I mean, it's very easy for me to say 
co-directed, co-written, co-produced on this thing. Cause it's, I mean, geez, every, every aspect of it has been a partnership. So mm-hmm. and I think we both agree that if it wasn't for the other person <laughs> being there, there's no fucking way this movie no. would have gotten made. No. I would have given up so long ago. Yeah. Cause even just the mere like, Going back and having to rewatch all of the footage. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we went and rewatched every single minute of anything we shot. And then we wrote, like, time-stamped, like, uh, descriptions of what's going on. And then typed it up so that most of it's, like, searchable. Mm-hmm. So, for, like, oh, where did that one guy say that one thing about the stuff? And so then you can go back. But, I mean, that alone took weeks and yeah. weeks and weeks. That was the whole summer. Like, we didn't really start editing yeah. it in earnest until September. So, the contest mm-hmm. ends in May. We spent the summer cataloging everything and and shooting our wrap up interviews with any of the folks that we followed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's and the same thing too. Like there are six interviews that we'll probably never see the light of day because I conducted them myself while I was traveling and they're awful. Oh, okay. I just can't. I I just I, I I there's one in particular where a guy is saying something really profound and I interrupt him to actually make a joke and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Oh, like it's no. so bad. It's so bad. But so yeah. <laughs> We each have our own strengths. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, going through this process, so you, you got a, a taste by doing your mini documentary. What was your your big learning experience from doing, well, and you're still in the middle of it because you haven't released. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to come after. Mm-hmm. I will never make another documentary. <laughs> that's I, what I learned. I, I would honestly have a very hard time doing it as well. I will say this, I will never make a documentary where I'm, uh, where our friends are the subjects mm-hmm. and where a, a place that we essentially are employed <laughs> is the setting for the documentary. Cause it's, I mean, I had to sit there and watch the documentary with Margie and the whole mm-hmm. time I'm waiting for her to like stand up because it's, it's not that we're completely critical, but I mean, you, you have to have some kind of conflict. And so we create that narrative, we don't mm-hmm. create it. We, we found that narrative yeah. with the, what the folks were telling us in their interviews and their mm-hmm. reactions to how everything goes down. And I mean, at any moment, I thought she was going to stand up, flip the table over, flip me off. But that's not Margie at all. She's yeah. very sweet. Margie's the comedy club owner. Yeah. Of yeah. Cap sorry. Who sorry. Puts yeah. together yeah. Uh, the contest and all uh, that stuff. And she's so. been incredibly supportive. And 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 with this too, she's like, I don't have artistic control over it. I, you know, it's 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 your baby. Uh, her words exactly. <laughs> it's uh, just hard, yeah. When yeah. I mean, when your friends are involved, uh-huh. when people you have to see all the time are involved, because yeah. you don't want to piss anyone off. But you also want to be really honest with the narrative. So it's like you have to ride that line. Um, and you know, this is, this is a sensitive subject to bring up, but like we also kind of hit a weird situation where one of the people we followed was Montgomery Wayne, mm-hmm. who passed away right after we had finished filming. Yeah. And so then, you know, there was the question of, okay, well, God, like, do we keep him in? Do we not? Like, does that, and like it almost like skews your perception of like how you're editing him, you know, because you don't want like anything to make him look bad. Because mm-hmm. like we loved Monty, and like he was a good friend of mine. But like, you, at some point, you're like, okay, we made this dedicated choice to be honest to what had happened, you know, mm-hmm. during the filming. Um, not that anything bad happened, but you know what right, I mean. Right. Um, and I think that he would have wouldn't have wanted us to change anything. Um. So yeah, like things like that happen and it's hard because you're emotionally connected to them mm-hmm. and then you have this kind of responsibility creatively and I don't know, it's a hard it's a hard line to walk. I, just as as a viewer and also, also as an Austin viewer who knows the story about Montgomery, you know, you when I saw him first pop up, I just like, I mean, my shoulders Yeah, kind of I mean, he was very like, oh, beloved. Right, he was and that must, them, I'm validating, but I'm also saying that must be so difficult, not only because it's a heartbreaking story, but everyone in Austin knows, but this movie isn't going to be just for Austin audiences. And how do you, how do you, how did you balance that? So when we met, it was with one of the Austin Film Society folks. We took a consultation when we were applying for the uh, the film grant back in uh, May. Right yeah, and uh, and she she actually gave us one of the best notes that we've ever gotten. Uh, and she was talking about how like the mechanics of the contest don't matter as mm-hmm. much as as the people that you're following. And so it was very important for us to have some kind of arc with each of the people. 
but also like expose them personally in some way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if, and that it was more important for me in, in the editing to, to make sure that that speaks rather than, you know, somebody showing up and showing a diagram of how the contest mm -hmm. works. And there's been a few folks. It's interesting. A few folks that are actually familiar with the contest that watch it and they go, I'm really worried that somebody that's not familiar with the contest won't know what the hell's going on. Mm. But nobody that's seen it so far that's not familiar with the contest has had that criticism. Yeah. And I think it's because basically they assume that we're guiding you through it appropriately and that everything makes sense. I mean, if you watch it and you don't know, I don't think you need to know that there's, you know, 15 prelim rounds right. and that there's a 230 comics and so many every night and all that. That We cut out Joke of the Night. We cut out the entire fan favorite aspect of it. Mm -hmm. That stuff's just completely removed. And for the better, it just moves faster yeah. because of that. And I think by taking out that stuff and focusing more on the characters, you know, showing what Montgomery does when he's not doing comedy, mm -hmm. Um, you know, Norm talking about balancing his lifestyle, right. showing him doing Satan and all that sort of thing. Like that's, that to me is more important than focusing on the mechanics of the contest. Yeah. I mean, certainly as a viewer, I was more interested. Uh, you know, the, my, my comment was I want less of what's happening on the actual stage and more of the stories of these people's lives. Yeah. Well, and that kind of goes back to why we would never again film with our friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, you know, ha being able to capture those, like, just like real life interactions and people living their lives, it was very awkward for us because we didn't want to impose on mm. our friends. You know, we didn't, and like we, we tried as much as we could, but you know, anytime we got pushed back, you know, we would tend to be like, okay, yeah. you know, because like, you know, there's different people that we wanted to like go into their homes and follow them. And they're like, nah, I'd rather not. And because they're our friends, we're like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I wish we had more like real life them just being yeah. who they are. Um, but we kind of, yeah, we kind of struggled with being able to get that footage because we were walking that weird line of our friends mm -hmm. and trying to be filmmakers, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is maybe showing a little bit too much behind the curtain, but like, I don't know that I would shoot another documentary simply because this one in terms of structure was easy. Like we're using the contest. I know I just obliterated any idea of the structure being necessary, <laughs> but, but the fact that we had a, a clear end point and yeah. of for the contest itself was, and sometimes documentaries don't do that. Like Winnebago Man, I don't know if you've seen that documentary mm -hmm. or not. It's clear to me that it was a very open ended, uh, film and they just kept shooting until they found an ending and then they ended huh. and it's great it's a really good documentary it's very funny it's heartwarming but that that i mean they shot for years three or four years on that thing and now we have footage of course like stock footage that i've shot in the past of the contest and everything but to, for me to sit here and tell you that we've been shooting interviews for for like four years or something mm -hmm. i'd be lying i mean it was very it was very simple in those terms of like We've got this timeline. We're following these people. Here we go. And this is when it's. And then even be. that was difficult. Like, oh, whole, yeah. like, you know, teasing out the whole actual narrative of like, you know, the part where we talk about the judges and the part where we talk about like, how are we going to, you know, make sure there's an arc in the stories. And I don't know. Like, even that was difficult with the clear cut narrative that we were following. Um, it's, it's difficult finding a story sometimes yeah. within yeah. a documentary. And I have a lot of more respect for them now. So what's next with the movie? Uh, well, other than tightening up a few things, we I I haven't looked at it since the screening the other night, and uh, uh, I watched it like you for... welcome those breaks at this point. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure <laughs> well, I watched it like three times in the last ten days, and I'm I'm like I need to take a step back. <laughs> but there's a few things we want to tighten up. Um, tech. There's a couple technical things I'm not going to go in, into granular detail mm -hmm. on those, and then uh, festivals start submitting to festivals. There's a deadline at the end of this month february that we want to make mm -hmm. so that's the plan have it done here in the next couple of weeks submit it to all the festivals we want to get into and sit back and wait for all those rejection letters to <laughs> roll in. <laughs> and our next step too is oh, i yeah. mean we had kind of put off doing any sort of crowdfunding because well first of all we're both like kind of weirdly morally opposed to general crowdfunding i think that people are just ridiculous crowdfunding these days um, do it for things they don't really need. Um, but so we kind of put it off, put it off, put it off. And we're kind of toying with the idea now of launching a crowdfunding campaign to help submit to festivals mm -hmm. and then help get us to festivals. And along with that, 
um, hopefully being able to do some sort of mini tour with the movie where we can also bring the comics with us. Yeah. So, you know, like have them perform, help get them more notoriety, you know, potential exposure, also show the film. Um, I mean, at this point, we really just want people to see it. And we would love some sort of distribution, but, you know, if you can't guarantee that, we at least want people to see it. Because mm-hmm. we put so much work into it, if nothing else, we're just like, just somebody fucking watch it. Like, <laughs> we work so hard, I don't care if you like it, just watch it. <laughs> and it's well done. It's, it's, I mean, compliments and kudos to all of your hard work. I'm just, you know, I'm just me giving you the, the praise. I know you've got... Much, much bigger praise to get out there, but I thought it was. Hey, no, it means done. a lot though. I mean, yeah. cause like I said, he and I have watched it so many times, just like sitting in the office. Like, you know, it's just nice to have other eyes on it and mm-hmm. get yeah. feedback or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do next, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do I do next? Um, yeah, I mean, we're just going to keep working on projects. Um, we have a couple, couple other big projects in our back pocket that we've been talking about for a long time that hopefully we can start working on after this. Um, as far as like making movies goes. Um, I'm actually getting married this year oh, personally. Yeah. I'm marrying Joe Hafke, who's another oh. comic in town. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's basically what we're doing, you know, just doing, Stand up here and there, um, making movies and Do you want to do stand up? I do. Yeah. I mean, I still do it. Um, I think I just kind of hit, this was my five year anniversary, like a week ago. And I think I just kind of got burned out because I went real hard for those first few years. So I think I'm just kind of like taking a step back and reevaluating like where it fits in my life. Um, so I still love it. I'll always love it. And I just kind of need to start writing again and get my ass back on the saddle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you're, Dustin, you're doing more videos? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, for me, um, the immediate future is finishing the doc. And then, of mm-hmm. course, FPIA starts on April 3rd. So that'll be my life for about seven weeks. Um, but uh, album recordings are coming up. Uh, Brooke Van Poplin, I'll be recording her album in March. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think Eric Krug sometime in the summer, but I don't know how official that is. And I probably shouldn't have said it, but oh well. Um, I can edit in post. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, with Sure Thing Records. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Um, uh, I'm their, their main, uh, engineer on everything. Nice. So, which has been a lot of fun. It's been cool to, to work with, uh, in Seth Cockfield, uh, uh, Brian Gutman and Mac Blake on their mm-hmm. albums and, uh, looking forward to working with a lady though. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm tired <laughs> of white dudes, <laughs> but, uh, uh, other than that, uh, pretty awful season two will probably be the next thing mm-hmm. that the next big thing that yeah. we, we come out with. So cool. Yeah. We're going to go back to one word answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How would you describe your future? Varied. <laughs> Wait a minute. Same. That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Uncertain. I don't know, man. I like where I was three years ago and I don't, I mean, I've just, my life is so different. I mean, I would have never thought I'd be getting married and like I could have a movie coming out and so I mean, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. The, un- the unknown. <laughs> That's the life of a creative person too, though. Yeah. Just and I'm okay with that. I don't right need to know where, what's coming, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would just be busy. <laughs> I just anticipate just that's that's probably a sure thing for me. So. Mm-hmm. Sure thing records. No, nice, sorry. nice, nice one. I'll hate you for that. that. They gave you Edit so that much one crap. out. That was that was. Oh god. <laughs> hopefully not. No, I was about to say hopefully not doing the podcast with, with Norm and Lisa anymore. But I'm, oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be allowed to leave the house. No, that's true. Two, we'll have to do it. Two babies. We'll have to do it in the nursery. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit about. uh uh, this is not going to be fun for anybody that doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> What's the name? You it, name? Almost yeah. related. There you go. But uh, there's a bit this week about uh, people hacking into baby monitors and him uh, taking advantage of that and jerking off in front of the baby monitor. Oh my God. But I was like, maybe Norman. we can just do the Norman. podcast from the, the baby monitor. Father of the year. Yeah. Oh, norm, Norm, Norm. <laughs> it, out of norm, context, norm. it sounds a lot yeah. worse than it actually is. Yeah, right. No, it's still terrible. <laughs> Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham! Presents The Current with our guests Katie Pengra and Dustin Swaylock. Tell us where to find you on social media, Katie and Dustin. You can find me on Twitter at kpenguins or my website, katiepengra.com. 
Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Dusty underscore Trombone. Uh, and you can also go to voltaicvideo.com and, uh, which I haven't updated in like seven months, but I tend to keep any new like, productions that we put up there. There's a click to it there. So is there a place that people can find information about the movie? Oh, that's, uh, fpiamovie.com. Okay. Yep. Right. And there will also, if we do any kind of crowdfunding, there will be a link there for it. There's, te- there's one there now that's temporary. We had funding that we did in the past with some folks and raised some money. Uh, and then if there's anything more official, it'll be there. Okay. So awesome. Listen to part one for more information about how Katie got to be the comedic genius that you heard today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, The Current, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com. Give a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.